This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today's gonna be kind of a fast one where I'll be showing you guys how to create these really cool grid circuit, futuristic kind of city-like displacements. Um, we're gonna be using an application called JS Placement, which allows you to create this uh, displacement map very, very easily, very fast uh, with no tedious work and to create these really cool displacements. And you can use this in Cinema 4D, After Effects, 3ds Max, pretty much any application that allows you to use maps for any reason. And of course, I'm be showing you a very basic primitive approach of how to use displacement maps. But of course, you can use the maps for many other things like futuristic UI, uh, you know, glitches and stuff like that. But um, as you can see, the maps generated by this application um, gives you quite a bit of detail here. As you can see in the Cycles 4D render here, a lot of little lines, little vents, little grids, um, you know, kind of like a circuit board looking kind of thing. So you can build a motherboard this way or circuit chip board, or even like a nice futuristic city as I'll show you in a bit. But again, lots of details. The maps are actually in 8K, so very large. And there's tons of detail in these maps. So you can use it for, uh, you know, a myriad of things here. So to get JS placement, you're gonna go here. The link will be in the video description down below or in the article down below. But basically, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And if you find this application very helpful, I would highly recommend tipping developers so that they continue developing this really awesome piece of software here. And as you can see, a lot of people have created some pretty cool stuff using JS Placement here, using their 3D application, and of course, awesome renders like Octane and Redshift and stuff like that. But pretty cool stuff um, that people have created using you know, JS Placement. Very cool, futuristic, abstract things here. But once you download the application, you're going to open it up. This is what JS placement looks like. And there are different types of modes you can use. So for example, the very basic JS placement uh, classic mode will allow you to generate very basic kind of like square displacement maps. You can use these for glitches and stuff like that. And of course you have other modes like the JS placement two, which is my favorite one here. This creates the nice circuit board kind of look here. So as you can see, lots of variations of blacks and grays and whites to create uh, various levels of displacements. Um, and of course, a lot of details like vents and shafts and little holes and little lines, pretty cool stuff. You can increase the iterations and you can increase the sprite scaling a little bit larger here. And of course, this mode is very complicated, so it will take a lot of time to generate uh, these maps. These are again, 8K. So just be patient if you don't see it updating. It will take a little while to generate these kind of things. So as you can see, a lot of details here. You can create uh, metropolis kind of circular grids here to create some pretty cool, interesting displacement maps, um, kind of like a city cityscape here and dot grids and stuff like that. Pretty cool stuff. You can you know have basic parameters to control things right here. So once you've settled on a displacement map that you like, you're gonna go ahead and just click the save button, and it's gonna save an 8K, I believe, JPEG or PNG um, of your displacement map, which looks exactly like this. So in your application like um, Cinema 4D here, basically you can just create a plane or whatever geometry you want. So for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, delete this here. We'll just create a basic plane. Of course you can use a cube or whatever you want. You definitely wanna give it a lot of geometry. So about, you know, a thousand at least, a thousand by a thousand for this plane here. I'll drag material onto the plane and we'll grab a deformer. We'll grab a displacer, get a child of the plane. And uh, let's go ahead and go into the uh, displacer here. And uh, we'll go into the shading. And for that shader, we'll hit load image and we'll load the displacement map. So once you load the map here, as you can see, our geometry kind of updated and we get a basic displacement based on the black and white values of the texture map here. We go to the displacer and of course we go to the object and you know simulate this and just increase the height to you know like maybe like 90 or so to really create that nice depth that you're gonna see here. And you'll get some pretty nice results just like this. And this is pretty easy to do in um, 3D applications. Of course, everyone who's using a 3D application will know what a displacement map is. But so how do you use this kind of stuff in After Effects? But before we jump into After Effects, I want to go ahead and give a quick thanks to our sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the one platform to create a beautiful website, whether it's for your online store, business, or portfolio. They have tons of themes to choose from, fully customizable, no coding required. They actually have a very powerful page builder, so you can customize your website the way you want it to look like, visually in the browser. They have amazing 24-hour customer support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off the life of your order. So check it out over at squarespace.com dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to build an awesome website.
So back in After Effects, you can see that I kind of have what I had in Cinema 4D. I have Geometry Displaced by our Displacement Map. Now you can actually use Cinema 4D Lite, I believe, and actually use a Displacer in Cinema 4D Lite to displace geometry. I'm not sure if Displacer is in Cinema 4D Lite, but it definitely comes with Cinema 4D, so you can go and check that out. Um, but if you want to do this in After Effects purely, you need a plugin like Trap Code Mirror that will create geometry for you or other plugins. So Element 3 does support geometry and it does support displacement, but you actually can't displace the geometry in Element 3D with displacement maps. So you're gonna need a plugin like Trap Code Mirror. So I'm gonna create a new composition here and we'll just call this Mirror. We'll create a new solid and we'll call this again Mirror. And we will apply effect Trap Code Mirror. Now this is a third party plugin, so you'll need to download this or purchase it or download the free trial over at redgiant.com. And the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to prepare the geometry here. So first of all, we want to go ahead and just flatten things out. So we'll kind of turn off the fractal here. We'll turn the um, the frequency down to zero. So we have a nice little plane here. And we'll go ahead and go to the, let's see here, the amplitude layer, which is basically the displacement map. And we'll go ahead and I have my displacement map right here. We'll drag it in. And uh, just to see what it looks like, we just scale it down. This is our displacement map here. We'll turn it off. We'll go to mirror and we'll set that layer as our amplitude layer. And already you're starting to see the displacement here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a camera. So we can kind of zoom in. So we have a rough displacement here. We'll go to mirror and we will go ahead. And the key point is, is you need a lot of detail in your geometry. So we need to increase the vertices to at least around 500 by 500. Um, just to kind of see the details at first. And I find that the tessellate set to quads seem to be a little bit better. And uh, we'll go ahead and increase the size to maybe around 800 by 800. So we have a bigger grid here. Let's just zoom out. And so here we have our nice little grid. And to really emphasize the displacement, I'm going ahead and, and increase the amplitude to, let's just say 300. And we'll just orbit around and you can see what that looks like here. Now it's kind of crazy right now because the material is a little bit messed up. So we'll go into the shader and instead of density, um, you, you know, you could use density for uh, kind of futuristic UI stuff. We're gonna change this to maybe either Fong or flat. I'm gonna go to Fong and we'll change the draw to fill. It's pretty good. And then we can go into the, uh, let's see here, the blend. We wanna set it to normal. We don't want it to add together for our case. And then, so right now you're lacking all the details. Uh, we don't have any lights yet, so you could add a light to the scene to really kind of shape this up. So we'll add a point light and uh, hit okay. So here you're starting to see kind of the detail that we have in our kind of circuit board here. And uh, let's go ahead and hit A and just turn that down to maybe like 20% or 40% uh, here. And uh, so we have mirror here. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the amplitude a little bit more to maybe 800. So we really start to see the detail of mirror here. And the way you wanna add more detail to all this is basically you want to uh, enable ambient occlusion. So before we do that, I wanna go ahead and create a background. I'm gonna create a kind of like an off white background. So we have our board here and I'm going to create another ambient light. Go to ambient light. We'll set it to maybe like 40%. Okay. And that would just kind of like light up everything. And again, like I said before, to add a lot more detail into the little crevices of all this stuff here, we want to go and enable ambient occlusion. So under, let's see here, the shader, we go to ambient occlusion. You can set it to on. That would create some pretty interesting results. Um, I find that the dither three works kind of the best without any uh, crazy banding. We increase the intensity. So now you're really starting to see the depth and the displacement of all this. It's really adds a lot of depth and detail to it. And then you want, so basically you want to balance the intensity and the radius here. So we turn down the radius. It's not going to be as spread out. So you really start to see the details of what you're doing here. And then we can in decrease the intensity so it's not too intense. And so you have something like this here. So pretty cool stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the background 
And I'm trying to show you an, another example of what you can do. So you can kind of make it futuristic by, first of all, you want to change the shader from Fong to, let's just say, density. And then we'll, we'll just, instead of draw fill, we'll do points. So it's just going to run to the points here. And already it looks more futuristic and kind of like Tron hologram like here. So these are just rendered dots here. So usually that's too much detail. So we can turn down the detail by turning down the, uh, the vertices in X and Y. So let's just say 250, 250. And that will just render the dots of everything, which can be a cool look on its own. You can add a glow or whatever. And the best part about Mirror 2 is that you have um, something called second pass uh, renderers kind of. So right here we have the second pass. We can set it to wireframe. So it will draw the, the, the dots and then also the wireframe second. So we can increase the point size to, let's say, 1.5 and decrease the secondary line to, let's just say, 0.5. To really get this really cool kind of spectrum of a city or kind of grid here. So you can do a lot of cool things with futuristic sci-fi stuff um, and change the detail and the look by decreasing the vertices here. So you can get some pretty cool terrain looks this way rather than using a noise for your displacement. So it can look pretty cool. Of course, you can change the color to whatever you want, but just like this, you can create some pretty cool displacements. And if you want to make it more like a city, of course, you can just you know, rack up the vertices to get a lot of detail and you know, create some pretty cool grid stuff this way. So you know, just a, a fun way to create some really cool displacement details. And of course, you can kind of like export the materials in OBJ and bring it into you know, Element 3D, add, you know, textures, reflections, stuff like that, specular into all this using After Effects and Cinema 4D. So pretty cool stuff. This is how you create some pretty cool displacement maps um, using JS Placement, really cool tool. Mad props to developers, but it's been a quick one. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo. Have fun, experiment. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.